What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Drigo. I do video production for small to medium sized businesses here in South Florida. Anything from TV commercials to corporate filmmaking. And today I'm taking you behind the scenes into a 30 second commercial that we did for one of our clients. I'm gonna show you the video first and then I'm gonna give you a full breakdown and behind the scenes on what it took to put that together. Let's get right to it. I'm so glad that the restaurants are finally open again. Hi, may I take your order? I have the fish with the cream sauce, whole lemon. And for you, miss? I want a divorce. Ooh! I'll be back with some breadsticks. Hi. So with this shoot, it's, we had three talents, which is gonna be the wife, the husband, and the waiter. I usually like to schedule the girls first, just because their makeup takes a lot longer to get done, hair, all those things. And I usually like to stagger people, especially right now with COVID happening. I think it's a little bit safer for everyone on set, but then you don't want people just standing around not doing anything. Not having a wardrobe stylist, what I usually tell the talent to do is to bring three to five clothing options that they really love that fit what we're doing. This is just because, you know, if you get on set, you brought a dress that didn't really look good with what he was wearing or didn't look good with the background, you, you're gonna wanna have options. While the wife was getting ready doing makeup, um, we pretty much had the other talent, the husband. We just had him sit down, him and the behind the scenes guys, so we can get an idea of framing. You know, we had about four hours to do this video. So I wanted to be able to utilize time. So for me to sit there and wait for her to do the makeup, to figure out the shot, like I just didn't have time for that. So here, as you can see, I'm putting down gaffer tape over the wires. The last thing you want is somebody tripping over some wires, breaking stuff. Um, it's super inexpensive for you to have, and it's a great tool. We actually used it for another instant here in the video. So now pretty much we got the mark of where he's gonna be sitting there. So now we're gonna get some gaff tape to put on the ground. So we know that when we shoot this from all different angles, we know the exact same spot that he's gonna be at over and over again because we want that consistency throughout the whole production. The camera for this that we used was the A7 III. Uh, I did have a director's monitor on this shoot for a lot of different reasons. One, it allows the DP to be an, around the camera doing what he needs to do. But then also, you know, having a makeup artist there her being able to see what's happening on the camera and being, being able to like, oh, maybe it's a little too glossy here or he's looking a little sweaty. She's able to come in and do what she needs to do. Why don't we just throw the other light back in here? So pretty much we're just trying to bring some separation there with the light mm -hmm. to be able to add some texture. So we pretty much figured out our first shot that we're gonna be doing over the shoulder, focusing on the wife. And that's the other thing too. Um, I always like starting with close-ups versus, you know, I hear a lot of people talk about start with the big wide shot. You know, as you saw at the beginning of the commercial, we, we used the wide shot twice on this. So I like doing close-ups because I want to be able to get the best possible delivery from the actors, right? So if we're doing wides all the time in the beginning and then we finally do the close-ups, they're going to be way more worn out. When you're saying the, I want a divorce, it's not, it's, it's more of like, you're feeling relieved. Okay. You've been holding this back. You're like, man, like I already called my girls. I don't know this is gonna happen. He's the only one that doesn't know. Being a director and being the editor, it's one of those things I learned from the Harmon Brothers course is that if it doesn't look good on camera where you're shooting, it's not gonna look good where you're editing. So, you know, me as a director, I'm stepping in and telling them like, hey, this is what's going through your character's head. And I'm really trying to, you know, bring that out of them. I'm also just trying to have a good time on set as well, because, you know, your energy as a director, that really trickles down to everybody else that's working with you. And uh, you, you know, you're like, yo, I want a divorce. Like, I'm, I'm over this shit. And then we'll work with your line. Like, I'm not gonna get a fucking tip tonight from this table type thing. I'll be right back with some breadsticks and then like walk out of scene. And action. That was fucking great. Exactly like that, yeah. That was perfect, guys. All right, let's go again. Okay. All right, bro, appreciate it. Right. So super important, client's not here. Pretty much in that scenario, I'm like, hey, we're FaceTiming you throughout this whole process. Did we capture what you needed? Get them on FaceTime, get them on set if you can, and make sure that you're capturing what they're looking for. 
So now we're switching up to our second scene here, which was the waiter pretty much coming in, asking them for the order, or delivering the ooh line. Right. <clears throat> ooh. Yeah, but like Is more, more, yeah, I'm like definitely more facial expression too. It's, it's like, ooh. Juan was a freaking champ, right? So he was actually supposed to do behind the scenes for me on the shoot. The actor we actually had hired for the shoot to be the waiter, that morning an hour before the shoot told me he couldn't come. So Juan hit me up on Instagram wanting to learn more about video production. So I was like, hey, come, come on in. Um, you know, you can do behind the scenes for me. So I ended up actually having to use him as the waiter. He's never done acting before, but he did a really awesome job with this. My yeah, I'd be like, just... yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But but let it linger a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so be like, ooh. Right now, I pretty much just took some time to talk to Juan and just let him know, like, this is what we're looking for. And like I said, he's not an actor, um, so you know, you have to be very understanding of that. I went and actually showed him, pretty much just guided him, like, hey, this is what I'm looking for you to do, versus just trying to tell him. I think that's the easiest way when it comes to acting is to be able to show them. You know, I'm not an actor by anything like that, but, you know, there's something very specific that I was looking for, at least for reactions, that I figured with him, see me do it versus me just telling him that it helped out and it actually went pretty well. Ooh. All right. Yeah, a, a lot better like that, over-exaggerated like that, you know, you know, maybe lose the hand over his mouth, but that's way more where we wanted to be. So we were shooting in the 85 before to have a little bit more of that lens compression to kind of blur out the background. But now we're just switching up to the 50, just so we have a little bit of variety when it comes to the edit. And now we're moving on to our last close up, which is gonna be the husband. Something else about, you know, shooting the close ups first is that if you shot the wide first, we wouldn't have known a lot of these little different things that, that were actually coming up throughout the shoot. So right now we're adding the background look to really uh, boring on his end. So we're moving around some things. We ended up finding like, you know, putting a wine bucket on the background to kind of sell everything that was happening, just to also add some texture on there. And we pretty much finished doing all the close-ups and now to add some movements because everything we shot was a pretty straight on close-ups. We're like, let's bust out the slider and use that for the establishing shot. You know, I didn't want to have it be so stale and just on the sticks shooting over and over again. I just don't want it blocking her too much. I don't want to feel like they're in a jungle. Damn, that's smooth. Yeah. <laughs> it's like days of our lives, like that. <laughs> so let me have you start on this side. You're gonna cut across and then come back that way. The new slider shot that we introduced on here. Uh, it looked a little boring, not having anything really happening as introduced them. So what we actually did, we got the makeup artist to cut across the camera this way and then had the waiter walk in. And those are the very little things that, you know, really sell that bigger production look. It's, you know, I love watching television and watching really big TV show and productions to watch things like that. How are they introducing characters? How are they doing these different things? So I think just adding her walking across the camera and then as he walks in, it's one of those things that adds a little touch that goes a long way. We actually did the exact same thing for this other beer commercial that we just did, that we had somebody walk across the camera as the character walked in. And you know, it really sells that other level of you know production into your videos that doesn't really cost you anything. You know, the way that we shot it, you couldn't tell that she was a makeup artist. It looks like she was either a hostess or a patron that was just walking through. Woo, I look money. <laughs> Good job, guys. Good job. All right, so for me, usually the most important part right after the shoot, that I like put it in a way before anything, is the camera. I wanna make sure that the camera is usually the most expensive piece of gear that you have here. So I usually wanna get that wrapped up, put away, uh, because the last thing you want, you know, somebody's putting something away and then knocks over the camera and then, you know, you're gonna be in trouble. Then also, the most other important part of shooting that location is you gotta put the location back better 
than how you got it. So always keep that in mind because you know this is about building relationships with people. So the last thing you want is to go to somebody's place, trash their home, you know, they're not gonna probably invite you back. So always put it back better than how you found it. That's a wrap. Let me know what you think about these kind of videos. Um, you know, is anything on here that I did not cover that you wanna find out more about? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. It's crazy to me how much this channel has grown in the past year. I started the year out at 100 subscribers. And at this moment, we're about a 708, and that's crazy. I really appreciate you guys. Um, once again, like, I'm very grateful. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.